So how are you doing? Are you got some snacks and coffee and um, am I now between you and the lunch? But no, I'm not between you and the lunch. You just refreshed. Uh, that's great. Um, I was born in 1974. I still have these things. I admire the other speakers who could do without. Now, um, before I start sharing with you some insights on sustainable finance beyond regulation, um, I wanted us to take one step back for a second. We're in the most extreme heat year in millennia, thousands of years. Yet, fewer and fewer people are taken to the streets. And extreme right-wing parties are on the rise. We have a decisive decade ahead of us for both the environment, the environmental foundations of human survival, and the survival of democracy. And that's why we're here, ultimately. Let's not forget about that. We can get you know, caught down, particularly nerdy guys like me can get caught down in the details of sustainability reporting and how to make it work. But let's not forget why we're here. And I mean, I was very happy when Pierre Palmieri earlier reminded us of that, reminded us that we need a social contract to make this work. It's not about maximizing ambition on climate change. This is about making the transformation work for everybody. Just to remember that when I now gonna go turn back to my nerdy self and try to talk about my favorite subject. How are we doing this at Climate and Company? We, um, yeah, I spent 10 years with the European Commission. Um, I'm still a commission official on leave actually. And I, but uh, I, with my friend David, I, I, I founded this think tank, um, Climate and Company. And so what we do is we, we analyze, we explain, explain and we empower, um, but maybe primarily we listen. And now I'm here not listening, but, but it's again my, my com comms department says I have to sometimes go and speak on stages. I'm not, not particularly good at it, I think. I, I more like to listen and have conversations and maybe we can have loads of those later on. So now I'm maybe in, I'm not in explaining mode, I'm not going to lecture you, but I want to share some insights with you. Now, in our sector, in our area of trying to find financial solutions to the transformation, we have a particular challenge. And that's, um, you know, that policymakers, financial institutions, businesses, science, they operate in, in their own spheres. And that's, that's all right to start with, but, but, you know, to tackle the climate and biodiversity crisis, we, we probably need them to work together. And um, we need to build bridges. And that's what we try to do. Um, so I'm coming from a regulation side. My co-founder, David, is coming from the financial sector. And, and what, what we try to do is building bridges you know, to help connect the dots between policy and finance, between business and science maybe to help everybody see things from a broader perspective and to finally find workable solutions. Um, and for that, um, well, we need an ecosystem that works. Um, that's what we do. I heard Flavia say that, Cipran said it before, Maria said it before, right? I, I, I took a few notes here. I mean, they were talking about building bridges. They talked about working together. And that's what we need to do, particularly in a complex field. You cannot find solutions just from one angle. Um, but let me yet now, maybe that's really my key message. I mean, I, I guess I could, could stop there because that's what we need to do. But I guess we need to then, you know, boil it down to what exactly and why. And that's what I'm going to spend the remainder of my, my presentation and my sharing of ideas with on now. So the title was Sustainable Finance Beyond Regulation. But um, for that, I would l allow me to first paint the big picture, so we understand where regulation fits in and where beyond regulation fits in. So, first of all, we need to understand that um, obviously sustainable finance is not the silver bullet. 
Yeah, we, we know that. We need carbon pricing, we need all kinds of other instruments. Um, but sustainable finance can contribute. How can it do that? Sustainable finance is all about creating transparency. It's about having risk management, fiduciary duties and due diligence procedures represent and consider sustainability risks. And ultimately, it's about seizing opportunities. So this is the contribution. Now, when I there's so much, you know, kind of negative talk about ESG out there. So much, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that people really struggle um, making it work. But also, I sometimes find like, what do you want? So if if we ha if we think climate change is a is a serious problem. Well, if we don't think climate change is a serious problem, we can go home. That's all right. So if we think it's serious, what do we want? Do we want the government to ban certain economic activities? That would be efficient, right? And that would be quite effective, right? But we don't want that, I think. Do we want very, very high taxes? I don't think so. So all we're asking for is at the moment more transparency to allocate capital more efficiently yeah? to reduce information asymmetry so everybody knows, and then they can invest according to their sustainability preferences. That's what sustainable finance is about. A pretty market-based approach, if you ask me. A pretty lean approach, if you ask me. So, how can we make that work? How can we achieve transparency, better risk management, and making it easier to seize opportunities? Um, we can do that. That's the left side there. Is it left? It's the right side, actually. It's just left, yeah. Left, right, doesn't matter. The green side. We need regulation and standardization to make it happen. We need to set the incentives right to do it. But then we need a lot of awareness, knowledge, and competence. And we need cooperation and coordination. So basically, this is what we can do to achieve the objectives of sustainable finance. And um, now that's the big picture. I mean, we have, a lot of, we have had a lot of big picture stuff today. Yeah? I mean, I, we have a lot to digest already uh, from us from the previous excellent presentations. I, I try to boil it down a bit more, okay? And I'm going to probably leave out certain things. I'm going to focus on others. Uh, but, but I want to talk basically about how we can make this work. Yeah? How sustainable finance can accelerate, accelerate the sustainability transformation. Now, my um, speaking coach at some point said, never do more than three messages. Here you go, it's uh, seven. <laughs> uh, I failed. But uh, why did I fail? It's not only because I've been working on these things for 25 years now. It's also because we have spent the last year talking to more than 80 experts practitioners, people in SMEs, in industry, in asset management, in risk management, in banks, in academia, in NGOs. And I wanted to do justice to the diversity of interesting and relevant and pertinent views that I heard, that are held by people out there in the ecosystem, people that all of you are part of or that any of you could work with and reach out to. And that's what we see here. So if we want to make sustainable finance work, we need to have sustainability experts and finance experts. It's almost a no-brainer. We need the real economy, the financial sector to talk together. and We need to go beyond climate. But what I want to focus on now is the making it work bit. And the pragmatism that we need. You know, to, we need to roll up our sleeves, guys and girls. We need, that's what we need now, I think. And it's, we need to enable ambitious transition finance. That is incredibly important. We cannot have sustainable finance. This is just financing the green niche. It's good to have lower, lower financing costs for renewable energy. I'm all in. But the transformation needs to happen where today we're not there yet. The money, sustainable finance for us is financing the transformation. High emitting sectors. Destructive land use practices. That's where sustainable finance needs to go. This is how we can make it work. We need to demonstrate feasibility. That's the other bit. There's a lot the Commission has done, uh, the European Commission has put a lot of regulation on the table. Now we have to see in how far it's feasible. What is feasible, what is not feasible. And um, I think the Commission can generally not do that, right? They cannot just 
focused on this or that sector. When we are regulating, we're regulating the economy. But what we can do, that many of us can do, let's zoom in. Let's work on sector-specific approaches to see how solutions could look like, to demonstrate them, to pilot them. That's, for me, sustainable finance beyond, beyond regulation. We could continue complaining and crying and whining about everything that's on the table and how bad the taxonomy is. Yeah? Or we could just try to do it, try to make it happen, see how far we get. And then we have a more credible, credible pitch next year or the year after. Then we can go back to the European Commission and say, look, guys, we tried it. 50% is feasible today. 20% was tough, but we made it. And there's another share that is really, really tricky. Could you reconsider? That's a meaningful conversation. That's trying to make it work. And then ultimately enable close cooperation with across the EU. We're going to talk in the afternoon uh, also a bit more about regional cooperation and about enabling international cooperation. And this brings me to zooming in further. So now, after these more than 80 conversations and reading a lot of stuff and my team with 30 people, um, basically what we brought here to Bucharest with us and what I'm presenting here is, is basically three, three things that we, that we think need to, need to happen and that we could focus on together. Um, the first one is strength and ambition, coherence and acceptance through European and international cooperation. What do I mean? And it's my favorite topic, and I have to watch out that I don't talk too much about that. But we had some really interesting ideas on the table today already by, by David and Raphael uh, talking about this earlier. And um, so it is, why do we need to do this? Why do we need to cooperate internationally? I probably had, maybe that's not what you wanted to hear. Uh, I'm going to say it anyway. So I think, first of all, we need to learn. Somebody out there has maybe already solved it. There's countries out there, I'm German, that are countries that are not Germany, <laughs> that are far ahead in the game. They can be, that's the United Kingdom, that's France, that's Netherlands. But also I heard amazing things that Yitka told me over breakfast, and she's going to share more about that later, what they're doing in the, in the Czech Republic, for example. I'm not, a, I'm not a very knowledgeable about Romania, I have to confess, but I bet you there's 20 amazing things going on here as well. So that's this international exchange. We need to learn. We cannot afford not to learn. We cannot all make the same mistakes, right? And there's a lot of very concrete examples. I, I, I have to stay on this fluffy meta level, and I kind of don't like that, but I, let's talk later and in the coming weeks and months how to, how to make that more concrete and make it happen. There's uh, the issue of supply chains that was mentioned. Um, actually, Hans did that, right? He said, like, oh, we did a very good job. We said we're really green in Europe, right? But we just moved everything to the supply chain. The same for natural capital and biodiversity. 80% of nat natural capital destruction is happening in the value chain. So now, progressive companies like Auchan, like we heard earlier, they are, um, it's entirely meaningless if they look at scope one. They need to look at the supply chain, and that's why we need to work also with our partners out there. And the, the other one that is maybe a bit more close to home, to the kind of conversations we're having in Berlin, in Warsaw, in Prague, in Budapest, in Bucharest, in Sofia, all over Europe, it's competitiveness. We need to level the playing field. Yeah? This is such an important message, I think, going forward, that our partners are moving along. Brazil is in some areas more advanced than we are, but we need to tell people. Otherwise, all Europeans think that Europe always has to move first. Europe is always doing most. Why? What about the others? We have to talk about that and get them on board. There's a lot happening in China. The reason why peak Greenhouse gas emissions are not projected to be in 2030, but uh, projected to be in already in 2028. There is hope, everybody. There's hope. Where's that hope coming from at the moment? It's coming from China. So we need, we need these kind of conversations to encourage us to know that we're not alone and to exchange with our partners and get them on board. So that's the international bit. Oh, sorry. Uh, the second, make sustainable finance work. Um, yeah, we need to roll up our sleeves and find out what works, what doesn't work, um, and, 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 and basically then feedback back to regulators. We need to generate ownership, I think, 
by working on it. I mean, I had various conversations with uh, people in, in the parliament. So in, in Germany, we often struggle with the fact that politicians have no real ownership with sustainable finance. Surprise, surprise. Have you ever tried to win an election telling everybody that, oh yeah, you know, we solved this um, um, CSDR and SFDR and taxonomy and, and CSDDD and we kind of implemented it. Are you going to vote for me? No, because I di just didn't understand a word of what you were saying. So what we need to show is like making sustainable finance work in the region, in the constituency, in the Wahlkreis, as we say in Germany, it's where people get elected. Yeah? If at the next election we get, can get them re-elected because they made this work for the SMEs in their constituency, then we have achieved something. Yeah? That's, I think, making it work, uh, what making this work about, and obviously working together. And the third bit is capacity building, empowerment, uh, and mindset. Also, something that was talked about today already. Um, maybe this making it work, maybe for front runners. That's okay. That maybe for companies like Auchan that decided to take their entire supply chain, value chain along, that are supporting them. Yeah, this was really inspiring. Don't see you now, but this is what we need to see. And it's okay that, that doesn't, that's not everybody. We need proof of concept. We need to create credibility for these transitions. But as a next step on in parallel, we need to bring everybody along. And that's what empowerment is about. That's what knowledge building and capacity building is about. And so maybe these are really the three the three propositions I have, and I have three more minutes, and uh, that's good because I'm done. I was just wondering if I could be more nerdy, and so I'm going to be very quickly a bit nerdy, and then a bit more, and then I'll wrap up. So very concretely, I just had a conversation behind the scene with Paul, who just told me about the SME platform they're developing, and, and we are doing something similar. We are, um, you know, SMEs, Taxonomy reporting starts now. It ends up on the table of SMEs. We need to support them now. So we're working with them. We need to develop tools. We're doing that. So that's one of the things we do. But we're just one think tank. There's another one here. And there's, an, there's many, many out there that are trying to do this. Yeah? And I think we have to there also work together and learn from each other. But it's about these pragmatic tools where maybe with a few clicks I can actually solve the problem. Uh, I think that's, that's what we need. Pragmatic solutions. And that's why we work on this. And um, right, I have to turn around here for a second. Um, so this is something else we're working. Yeah, we're working not with one of the biggest German um, asset managers because they were not interested. We're working with one of the most progressive asset managers, a Swedish asset manager, a Swedish pension fund. But that's, that doesn't matter so much. It's not about scale here. It's about proof of concept, making it work. So on this very specific thing, deforestation, we said, like, let's zoom in. We can afford to zoom in. Let's try to solve the deforestation problem. Can we solve that for an entire portfolio? When we're talking a value chain, chain, a pension fund, that's really the last in the value chain. Yeah, It's here. And then it has to understand what the company is doing and what the companies have in their supply chains. And then eventually I'll solve the problem. It sounds very daunting. But if you sit down, you're doing it step by step, and you get to it. You, know? you have a sectoral filter. You have a geographical filter. And you have existing tools that you can build on, and you add other elements, and then you eventually can solve it. Yeah? So these are the kind of more tangible things that are going on. If, if the rest of the things that I told you today was too fluffy, I just wanted to say there's some really concrete stuff going on out there. And let's learn from the front runners. Yeah? Um, ah, geez, no, uh, we see here already. Sorry, I didn't. That was more for sending the slides around, maybe. But so, um, in conclusion, I have 38 seconds. Um, um, we need to cooperate, right? Uh, we need a basically um, we need cooperation. We need agility and we need support. We need cooperation because we need to learn from each other. You know, we need our partners on board. We need a level playing field. We need agility by focusing, trying out, making mistakes, working with front runners, and then ultimately at the end of the day, we need to get everybody on board, build knowledge and capacity, and ultimately we're going to build an ecosystem. I think an ecosystem where we will all work together to make it work. Thanks. Wow.